Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today's webinar will be on the benefits of Clip Studio Paint over Photoshop. Uh, if you could just uh, give it a few seconds, we'll let everyone join in. We have a large pool of attendees. All right, we'll move on to the next slide. Um, just wanted to let everyone know um, that we have a few housekeeping items. Uh, the webinar itself will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. The Q&A session uh, will be 15 minutes and it will be at the end of the webinar. We recommend all attendees to ask questions right away in the questions area. Um, you'll be able to see it on your user interface for GoToWebinar. And uh, due to time constraints, um, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded and it will be shared via social media to the registrants as well as to the attendees. And um, your panelists today will be myself, uh, Fahim, uh, Joanna from Celsius. She'll be helping with the Q&A session. And of course, our guest of honor, Brian Allen. So just before we get into um, the webinar wanted to give you guys some info on Clip Studio Paint. We'll be more or less covering that in depth today. Um, if you wanted some more information on Clip Studio Paint, the all-in-one solution for stunning and amazing comics, illustrations, and manga, I would recommend going to the links that are available on the page that you're seeing right now. And with that, um, today's webinar will be on the Clip Studio Paint's benefits over Adobe Photoshop. And Brian Allen will be your guest, uh, and he will be the one presenting the webinar. And with that, I'll pass over the reins of the webinar to Brian um, to start uh, his uh, discussion. Hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for coming, and thanks so much for having me. Uh, let me share my screen. Just bear with me one second. Okay, you should be seeing my screen now. Uh, my name is Brian Allen. I'm a freelance illustrator. I've been a professional illustrator for 12 years, um, and I've been a full-time freelancer for six. And my wife and I run this business called Flyland Designs. And we work with businesses large and small all over the world. Um, some of the bigger clients we've worked with are uh, down here, uh, Activision, Hulk Hogan, Harvey da Harvey da Harley Davidson, Chick-fil-A, Scholastic, Marvel, and Epson. Um, and I discovered Clip Studio Paint several years ago. Um, I think it was maybe four. And I used to use Photoshop primarily for everything I did. But I could never really get Photoshop to mimic the way that I ink. And when I found Clip Studio Paint, um, back then it was Manga Studio 4, um, it was a total revelation. Like it was, it completely changed the way I work and it just made uh, everything more enjoyable and my artwork better. So I want to do a really quick run through of my favorite features. And um, I'm going to move pretty quickly because there's a lot of them. But uh, at the end of the session, I'll be happy to take questions and go into more detail. In general, um, I believe that Clip Studio Paint compared to other programs is faster because it's lighter. Uh, it doesn't try to do things that it's not. Um, and it's the best drawing and inking experience that I've had of any software I've tried. And it's also very stable. Um, for whatever reason, I, I don't experience any crashes um, compared with other programs. So let me open it up right here. One of the best features of Clip Studio Paint is something called reference layers. And uh, let me show you how they work. This was a illustration I was hired to do for the show Rick and Morty. And there's obviously a lot of things going on in this illustration. Um, so when I'm coloring it, it's really helpful to be able to quickly make selections for each different part um, so I don't have to stop what I'm doing and try to like lasso out different selections. So comic book artists often do what's called flats where you just quickly color in random colors but you're separating each shape like the eyeballs and the teeth and whatnot 
uh, as different colors, right? Then I'll copy that layer and color it all one color, something like this. I usually like to do it instead of white, start with like a light blue, <clears throat> something like that. Now, in Photoshop, I would have to select this flats layer and then get out the wand, the magic wand tool, and then make the selection here. Let's say I want to color his shirt. Then I'd have to go back and select the painting layer and paint on it. Then go and select the eyeballs, change the layers again. And uh, it really disrupts your flow and it takes a lot of extra time. With reference layers, all I got to do is click this lighthouse button and this will de uh, designate it as a reference layer. Now it doesn't have to even be showing however it can't be hidden. If you hide it if you click the eyeball it won't work but you could put it below your background even and it won't it won't affect it. Um, so I'm gonna turn this layer back on and you're gonna get out the magic wand tool and there's already a preset called selection for reference layer but if you don't see that preset you can make the changes up here in the selection uh, the tool property menu and what you're looking to do is you're looking to change the this section here to the lighthouse so that would be reference layer you want to make sure multiple layers is checked uh, and I'll show you why in a moment um, and then I have everything else off except for these two. This one is, we don't want it to refer to the editing layer, and I'll explain that in a second, and we don't want it to refer to the paper, which in Clip Studio Paint, the paper is the background. Not referring to the editing layer means that when I use the wand tool, it's not going to select from this big solid block of blue, it, instead, it's only going to make selections based on what's in the information on this right here, the one that we've marked with the lighthouse. So what's so great about this is just the speed that it allows me to work with. So here, let's color his eyeballs first. You know, so I'm going to click. Uh, oh, and let me. Um, we also want to make sure that follow adjacent pixel is off. I forgot about that. So we're going to choose our color layer here, and so I'm clicking the eyeballs, and then I'll switch right back to a paintbrush, select the color, and there we go. And I usually make all the eyeballs and teeth the same color so that I can just quickly go around and do that on the whole painting. Now you can also just fill this whole selection like that. Um, I like to do it with the airbrush against the blue because it, uh, if you leave a little bit of the blue towards the back it kind of makes a shadow. And alternatively if you don't want to start by painting you can actually just get out the uh, fill bucket tool and it also has a reference fill uh, preset and it's basically all the same options. You'll choose the lighthouse and you choose the uh, not prefer editing layer. And now you can just go around like this and click, oop, I have to deselect the selection first. Now you can just go around and select, or I mean fill different sections really quick of the whole uh, artwork. <clears throat> And just for the purpose of this, I'm not going to be real careful in what I'm coloring, but uh, here we go. Now, it, of course, it took a lot of work in the beginning to go and do all of those flats. That is a time-consuming process, but um, now that it's all done, going through and selecting colors like this uh, is really sped up, and I can focus more on rendering and less on trying to uh, stay within the lines. And just keep doing that until it looks uh, like this. 
Another thing that sets Clip Studio Paint apart is the ability to draw, paint, and ink in transparency. Um, basically converting the brush you're using instantly into an eraser and back again. What makes this so important uh, versus just pressing E to choose your eraser is that in other programs when you do switch to the eraser that's a whole other preset. So you might be inking with a hard edged brush and all of a sudden your eraser is this giant soft edged blob. You know, so what I like to do when I'm inking, um, this is a t-shirt I did for Harley Davidson a while back. I like to kind of like push and pull with my inks. So I will lay down some solid shapes, but then as I'm going through, I will press X, uh, which is a keyboard shortcut that you can assign. And that switches back and forth between black and transparency here. You can also just click there. Um, but by doing that, you know, I, I can draw some strokes like this and then modify those strokes really quick or I'll, I'll start to bite into the areas that are real solid to make some kind of transition. And what's real nice about this is you can do this with really any brush that you're using. So I might go in and use a stippling brush like here. Um, I believe that the way I did this was I had a big solid black area like this. And then I went in with a stippling brush on transparency and you can kind of just bite into it like that and go back and forth. Very cool. And this is also, uh, in Photoshop, what I used to do is I would go back and forth between using black and then white. But the problem with that, of course, is that it's not, it's your line art is no longer on a transparent background. So at the end, what I would have is a black and white drawing that I would have to convert to a channel and uh, isolate the line art. Now, you can see when I turn off the white paper that, uh, oh, here we go that all of this is completely transparent. Very cool, and it's one of my favorite things about the program. The ability to work in half tones in Clip Studio Paint really sets it apart from any other program that I've used. So let me show you how I use it day to day. I design a lot of t-shirts, and a lot of those t-shirts need to be silk screened. So in this case, I drew these, uh, these friendly helicopter zombies here, and the client loved it, but we discovered that I had one too many colors. They needed to only silk screen, uh, I don't, I think four colors. So I decided that the easiest thing to do would be to take this dark blue and instead so, uh, do a half tone of black over top of the blue base. So I usually set up my t-shirts in this way where each color is on a separate layer or in this case layer groups. So I've got a dark blue layer right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this all with black. So I'm going to lock the transparency and fill it to a fat ugly black. And going to lower the opacity until I get kind of the tone that I was looking for. Uh, it's not going to be as rich as that dark blue, but it still gets the idea across. So once I have the opacity that I'm happy with, I like that. Um, you go up here to the layer properties menu and click tone. Okay. And immediately that's going to convert it into a halftone pattern. The default is uh, 60 LPI, which is kind of high, so we're gonna we're gonna bring that down. Um, but what's awesome is you can actually choose from a whole lot of different line patterns. So I like this one uh, where it's lines instead of dots. I think that's cool. Um, there's also another good one here uh, that where are you? Um, diamonds are good as well. Now. We are zoomed way in, so these dots look real ugly. But the 
final t-shirt is probably going to be about this size and when it's printed on fabric you're not or you're not going to be able to see any of these dots and I've done hundreds and hundreds of t-shirts and this method works great so what's awesome about this and let's change this I usually like to work with like 55 or 42 LPI you'll need to talk to the silk screener about what LPI they prefer but what's fantastic about this is that unlike other programs this is a live effect so I can come in here and paint and it will still produce halftones so let's take a look at this uh, let's say that I wasn't happy with how this light effect happened and I want to do a more gradual effect I'm going to erase all that stuff I had and I'm going to make a selection here and I'm going to get out a big soft brush here and I'm just going to paint in black on that layer Oop, I need to unlock the transparency first okay so now when I'm painting you can see that like it's a pressure sensitive way to apply this halftone it's really great because I can make it smaller dots here and then bigger dots here just like that and when you zoom out you can see the effect very cool and if I'm not happy with that effect you can always go here and change the um, where are you Great, and then when you're done with this, then what you'll need to do is just rasterize the layer. So that way it can be opened in Photoshop. Um, and if you'd like, you can change the color of this either by locking the transparency and filling it with a color. Like that. So now we got the, a dark blue halftone. Or you can come up here and change the whole color of the layer like this and you can just select a color and fill it with the paint bucket like that I prefer to do that because it makes it real easy to change to tweak the color as I go on but you'll need to rasterize it before you export the contour line fill tool uh, is a pretty new tool to Clip Studio Paint and I actually don't use it very much but just started using it to test it out and uh, it's it's amazing um, I don't know of any other program that has a tool like it so let me show you how this works because it is a little uh, counterintuitive maybe um, so I have this graphic here and I want to color these eyeballs so that the gradient goes towards a lighter color towards the pupils and is like darker around the edges. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to select the eyeballs here and I'm going to get, and this is important, you need to get an anti-aliased brush here. It can't have soft edges. So I'm going to choose my first color. We want it to be like real light here. And there and then I want just like a thin edge around the whole eyeball that'll be like a rim light then I'm going to choose a darker color kinda like this yellow yeah that'll work and just with a real thin line you're gonna draw where you want this gradient to pretty much uh, be at its at a hundred percent so I'm gonna draw it like this this is just kinda rough alright so obviously that looks pretty messy but I will get out the the tool here and I'm gonna make sure that multiple layers is checked off it's gonna close the gap you can also edit how uh, how the gradient like is stepped but I'm just gonna use the default 
and you don't even really need to change your color you just click in there and click in there click there click there and what it's doing is it's it's sort of averaging those colors that you laid down um, and uh, I think it's really cool I've never seen any other tool like it in any other program using file objects in clip studio paint is a lot like using smart objects in Adobe Photoshop it allows you to basically make one instance of a uh, object copy and paste it and then when you make changes to that one object it will uh, apply the changes to all the instances of that object it's like um, using symbols in Adobe Illustrator so let me show you how to do it because it's really really cool so I'm gonna use uh, some of my foliage brushes um, here and let's see we're gonna go with this guy and let's say I decide that I want to put some leaves behind this logo here there we go alright so we're gonna draw a leaf that we like now this is on a separate layer and what I'm gonna do is right click it and go to file object convert layer to file object and we're gonna select the drawing area and say okay it's gonna ask us to save it and you don't know what that says now you'll see there's a little symbol here with with an arrow and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this thing and we can transform it so we're gonna make it smaller and kinda of move it around like that you can even change the opacity of it and what's great about this first of all is that nothing we're doing here um, is gonna result in pixel is it pixelation uh, sometimes when you're moving and resizing raster objects you can get they can get kind of blurry but since it's pulling from the data of the original that's not going to happen uh, so we'll get another guy here and we'll resize it alright cool that looks alright uh, but I'm not real happy with the color of this leaf so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right click and say file object uh, open file of file object and this is gonna bring up the original so what I want to do now is I'm gonna lock the transparency and let me try to paint like a more chartreuse green here and maybe add Add some color like that. And maybe I even want to kind of accentuate these lines here. All right, if I'm happy with that, then you just save that, close it, and you can see that it updated it for all the leaves, which is really cool. Even the ones that had been, you know, resized and uh, turned to a lower opacity. Clip Studio Paint has what are called vector layers and while this doesn't let you export the file as a vector like an EPS or an AI file it does let you have a lot of control over the line art and while you're working in the program it lets you resize infinitely any of your line art and it won't get pixelated. Um, there's also some other really cool features of it that I want to show you that you might not be aware of. So here's a saber-toothed tiger I was drawing and if we draw some strokes right here on a vector layer and to make a vector layer you just go down here and instead of clicking the new layer button you're gonna be clicking the new vector layer button it's down here at the bottom and I'm gonna make some strokes and they're gonna be pretty messy on purpose
I'm not going to care how they, or I don't care that they overlap, basically. All right, so if you do a couple of those, then what I can do is get out the vector eraser. So that's in the erasers, and we just go down here to vector. And what you do is you just find the point that you want to erase, and it automatically knows to stop where those two lines meet. It's very cool. So we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. And you can even kind of get rid of the points right here. Very useful. I don't know how it does it. I think witchcraft, but uh, that's all right every once in a while. Um, and of course, as I said at the beginning, the great thing about using vector layers, here I have his pupil right here, is that I can infinitely resize this thing and it's going to stay really crisp and sharp. Whereas if you take this pupil, which was done as a raster, um, a bitmap graphic, you can see that it's starting to get pixelated and, and uh, soft around the edges. There are a lot of other benefits to using vector layers um, that I'm, I'm not going to get into here, but one thing is it does help a little bit in correcting your line, just a little bit. Um, not as much as Adobe Illustrator, but I actually prefer that because I think it gives you more control over your line work. And then the other area where it helps you, of course, is being able to edit your lines after you throw them. So if we go and get the object selector tool here, come on, don't embarrass me in front of my friends. There we go. So I wasn't on the layer. So if you grab the the uh, object selector tool here. Now, just like in Adobe Illustrator, I can sit here and mess with individual points. And there's even all kinds of tools here. Um, where are you? Here we go. There's all kinds of like vector editing tools here that you can go and, and screw with and have a grand old time. The 3D object engine in Clip Studio Paint uh, is also way better than any other software I've used. Um, so let me show you how this works real quick. This is a drawing that I did for a monster truck um, and the client wanted him holding a monkey wrench, which, uh, which that's pretty clever. Uh, but monkey wrenches are hard to draw. So I want to get photo reference of this monkey wrench but I need it to be in the exact angle that this monkey is holding. Um, so I found this great resource of free 3D objects and uh, Clip Studio Paint has a marketplace as well. Um, so I found the object, it's just a uh, .obj file and I'm just gonna drag it right into the document here. And because uh, Clip Studio Paint re recognizes 3D objects, it doesn't have to be converted or anything, it's just right here. And as soon as you click on it, you get these great handles that allows you to do all kinds of things. Um, rotation, sizing, you know, and movement. And once you have it in the place you want, you can even control the light source, which is really cool. But in our case, I don't need the light source because I just need something that I can get in position and then I can trace. So, uh, but what I love about this is it's so easy to move this thing around. Um, and it's not like, like in Photoshop, it'll take you to a separate workspace to do this. I'm able to, to move this around directly on my illustration, which makes it so much more useful, I think. Um, so rather than watch me uh, fiddle with this thing, um, I already, I already moved one into place, so I'm going to get rid of the old wrench here. And here we have the 3D object kind of moved into place, and I'm just going to 
lower the opacity a little bit and just do a sketch over top of it so I know that the proportions and everything are right. Ah, I gotta find my pencil. I have too many brushes. There we go. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to sketch over it really quickly because I'm going to ink it over these pencils. So I don't need these to look pretty. I just need them to tell me where the uh, the important parts of the object are. Cool. Then I'll hide that and turn that to a blue line and ink over top. Now another thing you can do uh, if you don't I don't normally recommend doing this but if you don't even want to draw it you can take your object and play with this threshold menu up here and you can do things fiddle with all these settings like this yeah that's pretty good too far and then we'll add like a black stroke to it and sometimes if I'm in a hurry what I can do is just actually take this image as it is once I rasterize it and then go ink over top of it and kinda of add style and texture to it but this can be a really quick way to illustrate really complex three-dimensional objects the other great thing that Clip Studio Paint has is this huge library of uh, mannequins to draw from um, they have a female and a male and when you just drag this into the into the artwork this thing has so many points of articulated movement it's so useful I don't use it too much when I'm sketching uh, but what I will do sometimes is if I'm having particular problems with the pose I will uh, pose this guy in roughly the position I need him in and then sort of save a snapshot of that for reference um, as I'm drawing. Um, I don't find it as useful personally to do the mannequin and then try to trace over top of it um, because the final drawing I think ends up looking a little rigid but if you're learning um, this can be a great way to kind of understand how things move and bend um, and it can really help with complicated poses uh, especially in perspective so you can see here um, there it is you can see here that I ahead of time took a pose and kind of moved it around to where it is similar to my drawing here so this might have been what I could have used as reference when I'm doing a crazy pose like this really cool One thing that really sets Clip Studio Paint apart from other graphics programs is that the brushes can contain uh, color information. Um, unlike Photoshop where all the brushes are just black and white, uh, they can have any color and any texture in there um, and also it can be a seamless repeatable pattern. So this is excellent for tricky things to draw like ropes and chains so here's just some um, these are some of the brushes I've created uh, that I have available for sale uh, for example an illustrated chain that follows the motion of your brush uh, I made this zipper which has actually come in handy quite often um, silly things like a railroad track actually was pretty useful for a board game that I was illustrating so I want to show you here what I would do uh, for the for this illustration what we're gonna do is draw a rope belt around this guy so all of these brushes can um, have two inputs of color the foreground color is going to determine what the line art is so we're gonna do like a 
dark red and then the fill will be kind of a brownish like that there we go so set this to a new layer and in fact I'm gonna do it on a vector layer to show you what we can do with this even further and I'm gonna start like this and we'll just draw it around like that and then now we can erase this part great turn up the opacity there and uh, so now we've got a rope that looks like it's going around him and I'll probably add like a shadow or something to it because right now it looks a little flat so I'll just do something like this set this to multiply There we go. Uh, and, and what I wanted to show you was, since this is on a vector layer, we can now actually edit this and uh, move it around if we wish. So let's grab the object selection tool, which is over here. And when we select this rope brush, you can actually see all of the little anchor points here. and. Um, if you don't need that fine tune of a control, there are all of these vector uh, editing tools over here, like pinching um, or the control point. Let's try to see what can happen if we can just grab this. No, that doesn't work. Let's see, there's one here. Oh yeah, redraw vector line. This will kind of help fine tune it a little bit if I need to push it around. Cool. But I have another video that shows how to create these types of brushes, but it really is limitless. Any repeatable pattern that you can create or find, you can turn into one of these brushes. One of the most uh, useful areas of Clip Studio Paint is their ruler section. And you can find it over here. It looks like a uh, triangle, a blue triangle here and they've got a ton of presets already that do all kinds of different things and they're incredibly useful and what's fantastic about them is they work with pretty much every tool every brush uh, you can use the lasso tool you can use soft brushes hard brushes vector layers um, stamps patterns smudge tools all of them snap almost all of them snap to these rulers so here's a picture uh, I illustrated of uh, a meditating alien and I just want to show you real quick some of the rulers that you can use um, my favorite is the symmetry ruler of course and you can throw this down uh, and you can choose how many lines of symmetry you want so if we just choose two then it's going to draw the same thing on the left and right which is very useful if we want we can go a little nuts and add let's just add the maximum symmetry lines here and see what happens and what's fantastic about this is that this really even though it's computing all of these strokes it really doesn't slow down my computer at all which is fantastic and that's very different than other symmetry tools I've used in the past um, and this is a pretty large document too alright uh, so then uh, another favorite of mine is called the radial line and that is in special ruler there's a whole bunch of them here when you go to the drop down so we'll go with the radial line and 
I've chosen a focal point right there. So everything I draw is going to, oops, let's use an orange, is going to come or snap to that area. So it's fantastic for doing like zooms and, and focus focus points here. All right, and then the curve line is very similar to that. I drew a curve like this, and it's all the lines are going to go to that one point, but they're going to follow this curve that I drew. Very cool. You can make kind of like spiral effects. All right, here's another favorite. Um, it's called concentric circles, and this one again is found in the special ruler section and in the drop down right here, concentric circles. And we can make it into a perfect circle or an ellipse. And every line that I draw is going to follow that same circle, but I can do the lines further out or further in depending on where I start. So that's different than drawing an elliptical ruler because I don't I would have to move that ruler each time. And I should show you too so you can use as I said you can use any brush. We could make use a soft brush. Uh, we can use a pattern brush. Let's put a rope in space. Why not? happy balloons so very useful tool um, and just simply having the ability to have a parallel line ruler is also really useful too so we'll check that out here and maybe we'll do like a beam come down here sweet and last uh, my other favorite ruler is called the ruler pen and this is really cool because it allows you to freehand draw your own ruler and then go back over it again so what we'll do is we'll select the where are you ruler pen and you can play with the stabilization so in cases like this uh, I would want to turn the stabilization way up because I'm basically drawing a stroke where I want to put a lot of thought into the, the motion of the stroke and then when I trace over it then I can control the uh, line width because sometimes trying to do both those things at the same time can be challenging so I've got this stroke here and now I can go over it Whoop! I'm, I'm actually glad that happened because sometimes if it's not snapping what you'll have to do is go into the options here and look for the correction we want to say able to snap and it will follow that line and I can kind of control the thickness of the line like that very cool and then what you can do is grab the uh, the object selector right here and grab this ruler and we can just kinda like move it just a tiny bit maybe resize it a little and now when we go to trace it again it still kinda follows the same shape but we've just moved it a tiny bit like that alright great uh, then of course there's also perspective rulers which are really useful for drawing buildings and cities and things like that um, but I'll do a demonstration of that at a different time because they're, they're a little more complex but they're incredibly useful okay another great feature about Clip Studio Paint is uh, the magic wand and the 
fill bucket tools are much smarter and much more customizable than in any other graphics program I've used. Um, in fact, I usually, I used to never even use the fill bucket before uh, because it just was useless in Photoshop. Um, but let me show you a situation like this where we have pretty defined line art and uh, pretty open spaces. Um, we can use this to very quickly color this piece, or at least to flat color it. Um, so this is our man Gritty here, and what we're going to do is set the line art layer with the lighthouse option, which is the reference layer, and I'm down here on another color layer, and if we select the paint bucket tool, what's so fantastic about this is that I can set an, a scaling effect. Normally in Photoshop what I'd have to do is either fill an area or select it and then grow that selection by a couple pixels because I want the color to go under the line art just a little bit. Um, otherwise you sometimes get this like ghosted edge which can be a problem uh, when printing. But because of this I don't I can skip that whole step. So I'm going to select area scaling to about two pixels and the other great thing is this close gap okay let's check out this area right here you'll see this little gap here and that's pretty common because not all of my line work is always going to be perfectly enclosed um, you know sometimes you might want to do that for effect in this case it was just an accident when we have that selected we go to reference fill and that way it's going to be pulling from this reference layer and I'm going to select area scaling we're going to grow it by two pixels that way the color will flood and expand underneath the line art and I'm going to say follow adjacent pixel so we can just go and it will bypass that area if that was in Photoshop it would have just flooded all the way into this section too but now I don't have to worry about that as much, which is, which is fantastic. All right, and the Magic Wand tool has all the same options as well. So what we can do is set it for the reference layer. I'm going to have my inks up here set with the lighthouse. I'm going to set the area scaling to like two pixels, maybe three, um, and I'm going to have it close the gap and we want follow adjacent pixel otherwise it's just going to select everything that is not black and uh, we don't want that so what I can do is go in here and you can see when we zoom in it's doing a really great job at selecting everything and then it grows into these spaces and that's another benefit of having it expand just a little bit because otherwise it probably would have gotten tripped up in this little area right here so it allows you to really get all the areas you need to get so now that we have a selection we can just fill that and keep going all right another great thing about clip studio paint is the ability to warp multiple layers at once so in Adobe Photoshop you have the liquify tool which is a great tool but you can only use it on one layer at a time so in this case I've got this rat here that I just want to warp a little bit but I don't want to merge all these layers because I've got some good stuff here I've got the knockouts I've got the inks and I've got the colors all on separate layers in Photoshop I'd have to merge those if I wanted to warp this thing but in Clip Studio Paint I don't have to what I'll do is I'll hold shift to select all these layers and then you go to edit transform mesh transformation and the default will give you this many points but you can go in here and add more points to the mesh which will just give you more control over this thing you can add quite a few but uh, what all I need is just a few because I just want to take his elbow kind of pull that out a bit I want to pull his tail just a tiny bit there and maybe pull his face up a little there we go 
kind of want to change the angle of that. And it gives you the ability just to fine tune things a little bit. There, great. So you hit OK, it takes a moment, and then it'll apply that transformation. So you can see if we undo, that was our warp. So we can also do that here to the lightning. Go to Edit, Transform, Mesh Transformation. Add a couple points. And let's just say I want to move some of this lightning around. Kind of bend it around him a bit more. Very cool. And uh, I, find, I find this really useful when you're trying to animate things. Um, Clip Studio Paint has a whole uh, animation panel here, um, which I'm not going to go into, uh, but I have used it before, and it's, it's fantastic. If you've ever used the timeline in Adobe Photoshop, it works similar to that. i to put this here. There you go. So what you can do is you can add a snapshot of your drawing, warp it a little bit, add that snapshot, warp it a little more, add that snapshot, and then add some tween frames, and then you've got an animation. Another great tool that I discovered recently is the ability to make editable gradients in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, we've got this uh, fat rocker here and I need to make a gradient in the background but I'm not really sure exactly what colors I want to use or how big I want it all that kind of stuff so rather than just throwing gradients down and seeing how they look um, I can make something similar to Adobe Illustrator where it's a live uh, tweakable gradient so what we'll do is we'll go to the gradient tool and you want to make sure that for drawing target, it says create gradient layer, not draw on editing layer. So what I'm going to do, I know I want it to be pink, I think. So we're going to go with maybe like a pink color to uh, I, that blue. I like that blue. So I'm going to choose, um, let's choose like an elliptical ruler or elliptical gradient right there. So I'm going to throw it kind of from the center. And uh -huh. there we go. We have the gradient. Now, if I change my mind about how or which colors I'm using and how big the uh, each area of color is, all I got to do is select the object tool here. These little uh, handles will come up, and you can edit the size of the gradient if you want. But once those are selected, now I can just come up in here and uh, live edit this thing. Hold on. So I can drag this and mess around with how much uh, area that covers. All right, so now um, I'm able to edit the gradient and I can move the colors back and forth. Now, if I want to add a new color to this, all I got to do is hover your cursor right over these little lines and click the plus sign and what I can do is change this color to anything I want very very cool and any time uh, I want to resize this thing it's considered a vector layer so it's never going to get pixelated as well which is very sweet. Another feature you may not be aware of in Clip Studio Paint is the subview palette. Um, this is accessed here when you go to window subview and I've already got it turned on. What this is it allows you to preview any other documents and at any size you want you can rotate it for some reason 
And whenever you hover over the image, your cursor automatically becomes an eyedropper tool. So I found that it's really awesome for holding like custom palettes that I throw together real quick or when I find like a, a really cool color scheme on the internet. You can just drag the image directly onto here and it'll open it up. And you can keep many different files in here. So I always have this like grayscale gradient palette here and then uh, uh, this was just a color scheme I was working with. But for this Georgia Bulldog I was illustrating, um, what I'm going to do is take the company colors that they sent me, or the team colors, and uh, when I first submitted this to the client, they, uh, they liked it, but the red did not match, so they sent me their palette. So we will, uh, hold on, I'm going to drag that right in here. And now I can sample directly from this palette. Now, before you yell at me, uh, that's not really a good color matching uh, technique. Um, before this goes to print, I will make sure that the uh, you know the Pantone numbers line up, and I will do those adjustments in Photoshop. But when creating a web graphic like this, uh, it's perfectly acceptable just to do it this way because I'm working in RGB anyway and my monitor is already calibrated. So I'm going to go here and select the red of the shirt and you can just hover over here, select the red and we'll fill it. Um, very cool. So I, I love this because uh, it's also really useful when I'm doing something in a series. So if I'm illustrating a children's book and I need to draw a character from a previous page I'll load up all the pages from that book so I can quickly flip through and find reference of that character so I can match it correctly. Another one of my favorite tools in Clip Studio Paint is the, uh, the Lasso Fill tool. Um, so a lot of people have asked me where they can find this tool because it's not immediately apparent. It'll be in the Direct Draw tools. That's where you'll find the straight line and like the polygon and the curve ellipse tool and all that. So if you go to the lasso fill, um, you'll change it to just a normal blending mode, 100% opacity. You can mess with the stability of it. But what this does is basically it's just a polygon lasso only it fills your selection immediately. Um, this saves a ton of time actually and uh, it's a lot more of an intuitive way to draw. So if you take these guys, these are some uh, barrel of evil monkeys for a brand called Saltipus and what I like to do sometimes to make the line art look more organic is instead of drawing lines I'll come in here with the lasso fill tool and I'll draw a big broad black shape like this because it's great for filling in large areas real quick. And then I can come in here and, whoops, sorry, I just need to get a white background back there. All right. you, then you come in here with the tool and you can kind of carve out some unique shapes like this. Uh, and I try to keep it real loose. Um, it's a great way to add some, some texture as well. And it's great for just drawing real quick like some rubble and, and weird textures that you're not going to get from your brush. Like that. Uh, and it's also great just for like silhouetting things real quick. Like if I were going to draw a little monkey paw coming out of here. I find that it's easier to do this and then go back and tweak it rather than try to draw something and fill it.
Cool, and you can do this, of course, you know, with rectangle and ellipse, but the lasso fill tool is one of my favorites. Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, Brian. Um, Joanna, um, if uh, you have any questions, it would be great to ask uh, Brian right now. Yes, um, so I would like to ask Brian some questions about that you all have been asking. We'll do as many as we can. So um, let's start with some setup related questions. Um, Brian, what kind of sure. graphic tablet are you using? And what is your configuration for tablet and keyboard and mouse and everything? Sure. Um, I've been using, well, currently I'm using the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 inch. Uh, I got that back in April, but before that I had been using the older Wacom Cintiq for uh, maybe like seven years. Um, I love it, especially the new one. It's, it's amazing. And, uh, if you're interested, I have a YouTube review of it on my channel. I would recommend, cause I, I do get asked this question a lot. If you're serious about digital illustration, um, it is worth at least trying a display tablet. Um, I used to use the, the Wacom tablets, you know, that are lay flat on a desk and you're looking at your monitor, but I always had a problem with the disconnect between your hand and the screen. I find it so much faster and better to draw directly on the screen. Now it's expensive, uh, but if you're doing it professionally, I think it will pay for itself really quick. Um, and as far as the like keyboard setup, I'm using all kinds of things. I have a uh, keyboard or a keypad that was designed for gamers called a Razer, um, I think it's called like the Orbitron or, or something like Orb Weaver. It's the Razer Orb Weaver. And it was designed for like people playing games for hours to be able to real quickly press keyboard shortcuts and macros. And I've programmed all of like my favorite tools and actions and things like that. So what's great is usually when I'm working, I don't need to touch the keyboard at all. I just have my left hand on this keypad and my right hand on the uh, the pen. Um, and yeah, I think, does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, um, just let me check. There are a few questions about um, shortcuts and setups. So, um, sure. just a second. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, yeah, and while you're getting it, I'll show you yes, where sorry. you would, I'll show you where you would change your shortcuts. Maybe what oh, I yeah, can do in the future, it. I yes. could like maybe provide how I set up all my shortcuts. But I should say, like that's one thing I love. Another thing, I guess, I love about Clip Studio Paint is that it gives you more control over your shortcuts than any other program I've come across. Um, you can control literally anything, really. Um, so what there's a, actually a couple different places one of them is going to be in the menu up here in shortcut settings the other one would be modifier key settings um so let's start with shortcut settings these are going to be all the things that you can control for your tools your options you can assign a keyboard shortcut to any of your actions that you set up um so let me show you one that i use all the time uh, currently, oh, it would be option. So I like to have X switch back and forth between drawing and a transparent color. Um, I think by default that switches between your main and sub color, but I use that much more. Uh, so all you got to do is just come in here and click on this and you can change it to whatever you want. The other menu option, the modifier key settings is also really cool because you can go in and change any of these tools uh, to make it do something when you hold like here, like option shift. I can make that change the brush size when I'm using an, this other tool. Um, and you can select, you can do this specifically for every single tool there is in Clip Studio Paint. Um, so one thing that I've set up is that whenever I'm using a drawing tool like the pen, I have it so that if I hold, I think, I don't know, maybe it's command control, um, that will bring up the object selector tool. And that allows me to really quickly like 
throw a shape down and then switch to that tool by holding it, those buttons, and then transform it, um, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, okay, so the, the, the other shortcut one was specifically about the preset colors. Like, where do you find those and the palette oh, in general? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's I, that's a great question. I, I get this a lot. Um, any any like swatch palettes that you find that work in Photoshop will also work here. Uh, all you'll all you'll have to do is either drag the file directly into this menu, or you can go to import color set. The one that I'm using currently, uh, I believe, was something by the artist Alex Ducal. Uh, he's a really talented artist, and I, he was giving it away for free. So I I really like my current or his current swatches because there's actually not that many colors here. It it kind of has every color of the rainbow, but only a few tones. And this sort of limits me so that I'm not picking just off the wall colors, uh, which I think is important. Because when you go to the art store and you buy like a watercolor palette there's usually only uh you know maybe nine swatches in there and you should be able to use all of those swatches to paint just about anything um as far as where to get other palettes i i would just do a google search or maybe search deviant art because i know a lot of people make those available uh oh yeah and real quick too um this giant enormous palette here is just my color history and this was introduced a few years ago, and it's fantastic because every single color I use is saved in here. And I can go back and select the color that I used, you know, t two documents ago. And I think Photoshop has this, but they only save like 12 colors. This thing saves just, a, you know, saves them all. So it's really useful. Okay. Um, remaining with the color thing color theme. Um, here's a question regarding your workflow. flow. Uh, you use very vibrant colors and they're always balanced and never overdone or too busy. How do you usually organize your coloring process in terms of steps and layers? Uh, well, I appreciate that. I feel like coloring is the most difficult stage for me. Um, I I don't know. I mean, because I feel like my coloring is, is very chaotic. But what it's, this is a good piece to look at because there's a lot happening here, right? Um, maybe too much. But what I like to do, and I sh kind of showed it here, is when I start coloring, I make everything like one color. And I usually start with a, a low saturated blue. And then find out which colors you know are going to have to be in here. So, for example, if we know that Rick's shirt, has to be blue i'm going to start with that and then i start to pick colors uh sometimes from this palette sometimes i'll just use the eyedropper tool like this grab this blue and then you know maybe move it a little bit towards the green so that the colors aren't too drastically different from each other and add that somewhere else um i think you also saw me rather than here let me grab this Bear with me one second. Let me get this. So rather than try to pick the color and fill it like this, what I like to do is get the soft airbrush and like gradually put the color on. So that way, as I'm as I'm coloring, I can see kind of like, okay, good, that's too much maybe. And then I'll maybe add a little bit of yellow like this. Or something like that because trying to pick the color from the wheel or from a swatch and just and hope it's right is kind of a guessing game that you're never going to win you know you you kind of want to have you kind of want to pick your colors on the canvas if that makes sense um and i'm sorry it's difficult to give like a real specific answer on that uh i guess just just practice and i guess also trying to get inspiration from a lot of artists I have a lot of folders with really great color schemes that I find. So I think it's important to collect those over time uh, because that also forces you to try new color schemes that you never, uh, you might never, never have tried. Okay. 
Um, here's an, another question. Uh, what are your main inking brushes? for, for uh, the pieces you have shown today, uh, apparently from someone who has purchased all of your brush packs. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I do sell these on my website, but I also use a lot, uh, here, I'll show you. So I use a lot of the default brushes. I think the G pen and the mapping pen are great. Those come with the software. Um, the G pen especially is great for cartooning where you need like a really smooth, uh, predictable, dependable line. Other than that, I like, I use this brush called the Pencil MS4 brush, which was created from something that I converted over from Manga Studio 4. Um, and then I also use uh, Ray Frendon. His, he has a great brush series. Um, so I use some of his. And uh, I also really like this square tip. I use this a lot. Uh, it's a brush I made that here, and I'll show you what that looks like when you go into the settings. It's just a square. Um, it's a square, and then I played around with the the curve a little bit. And what this does is it gives my line work. Whoop, it gives my line work a little bit of of style to it and edge, like right away, uh, because it's not a perfect circle. So I find that really useful. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's finish off with one more uh, question. Um, how long did it take you to adjust to using Clip Studio for your work instead of Photoshop? You know, not long at all because I actually found them to be really similar. Um, the I've talked with artists who are going from like, let's say Sketchbook Pro or Corel Painter to here, and there's a little bit more of a learning curve. Um, I think, the, the thing that took the longest to figure out was how to make the brushes because there's so many more options in this program that it's sort of overwhelming at first to figure out how to do it. Uh, but there are lots of videos online on how to do it. And once you learn it, uh, it's amazing what you can do. It's pretty limitless. Um, other than that, most of the keyboard shortcuts are exactly the same. And the ones that aren't, you know, I ended up just changing myself so that I didn't even have to relearn that. The layers and the filters are generally the same. Uh, the, what else? Um, yeah, e everything else is just sort of learning the new tools, but there's a lot of resources for that. So it didn't take too long. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all the questions I have for today. Hey, great. Uh, and it, if I could just say, um, I am, for the webinar, I'm giving a free set of actions. Um, if you just go to my web shop, which is flylanddesigns.com shop, anybody can download those. Um, and the actions are just things that I do when I set up a new document. There'll, there'll be things, oh, I can show you really quickly, I guess, but they will just set up a new set of layers and a new set of guides um, and other tricks that I find useful. So if you're interested in that, you can download those for free. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, and with that, uh, we're concluding the webinar. Um, I wanted to also take a moment to thank all the attendees. We had quite a large turnout. Apologies for the bit of delay that we had on the screen, um, but hopefully towards the end, things got better. Um, if you want to know more about Clip Studio Paint, please make sure to go to graphicsly.com as well as clipstudio.net forward slash en. As well, if you want to know more about Brian Allen, please go to flylanddesigns.com. And once again, from all of us at Graphicsly, Celsius, Flyland Designs, thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk to you soon, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.